It's interesting. Very important to do. First, the river was quite surely not a major stream. Otherwise, a permanent settlement and a name which would have accompanied it. Second, Lehi gave the river a name, so it probably had no name that he was aware of. See 1 Nephi chapter 2, verse 8. It's hard to imagine that any substantial flow of water in the Near East would go unnamed, implying that the stream did not amount to much, and probably was a localized phenomenon. Third, the river Laman was in the wilderness. 1 Nephi 2, verse 6. A place generally devoid of people. The fourth thing the Book of Mormon says is, the waters of the river Laman emptied into the sea. That's 1 Nephi 2, verse 9. In the area where Lehi had camped, which must have been at the north end of the Red Sea, near the Gulf of Aqaba. Fifth, Nephi described the stream as continually running. 1 Nephi chapter 2, verse 9. Finally, the river Laman ran through a geographical feature that Lehi himself called the Valley of Lemuel, 1 Nephi 2, verses 6 through 10. Our initial visit confirmed that the stream in the canyon met all of the physical criteria. And this is in Arabia, people. This wasn't known in 1830. I got real interesting news for you. Running streams? I've seen anti-Mormon critics complain about that. They say this is ludicrous. Not now. It's physical and it's real. Now, next he says, the Hebrew words that Nephi would have used to describe this aspect of the water continually running, a river, a stream, and so on and so forth, Whichever word Nephi used that came into the English as river, it could denote a large stream, a small, continuously flowing one, or a seasonal flood. His choice of the phrases river of water and continually running, however, seemed to point to a stream that flows more or less all the time, at least throughout the period that they camped nearby. What were the characteristics of the valley through which the river Laman flowed? First, Lehi described it as firm, steadfast, and immovable. These are terms that hint at impressive geological features. And they are there in this valley. They have the pictures. Second, the valley was located within three days walk, or camel ride, within, beyond, the northeast tip of the Red Sea. Now this is an important detail. The Book of Mormon describes it beyond the tip of the Red Sea in 1 Nephi chapter 2 verses 5 and 6. Finally, the Valley of Lemuel reached the Red Sea, for Lehi observed the mouth of the river emptying into the sea. That's 1 Nephi chapter 2 verse 8. So it was not strictly an interior valley. Rather, it reached the seashore. The valley we found met all of these conditions. The fact that the stream and canyon fulfill the conditions reported by Nephi for the river of Lemuel, for the river of Laman and the valley of Lemuel, convinced me that we may well have indeed discovered these Book of Mormon landmarks. Nothing my colleagues and I have learned subsequently has given us reasons to change that view. The grandeur of the valley is difficult to describe in words and in pictures even. It is a narrow gorge cut through a massive granite mountain. Let me see if I can find a... Okay, I'll get to it. I'll get to it here. It's a pretty impressive gorge. Well, there's part of it. There's part of it. There's part of it right here. I'm going to show this to you. Rookie hour, but this is too good to lose. There we go. Look at how massive that... Look at those tall trees. And look at how massive those rock cliffs are. Look how high that granite's been cut through that gorge. That's pretty awesome. That's one of their photos. Another one of their photos 
is, if I can get back to it, boy, this is rookie hour, isn't it? Oh, well. Another one of their photos of the gorge is right there. And they say, notice, is this the one where they say, yeah, yeah, way down here. Notice that Jeep. Notice that Jeep. Look at the size of that canyon. And they say the photo, it goes off twice as high as they could get in that photo. Here's another shot of the actual opening of the valley right there in the, in the desert. And then there's another shot where it widened out. This is in the upper valley. But make no mistake about it, folks. They found a valley from the right distance, approximately 70 miles, 70 to 75 miles from Jerusalem in the same direction from the tip of the Red Sea, just exactly like the Book of Mormon describes. And in that valley, and in that valley alone, Potter has been back there five different times in several different months, and he has found no other valley that has a continuous flowing stream except this one. The Book of Mormon says those features were there, and they are. That's impressive. I have news for you. That's impressive. Very interesting. And they're nowhere near 500 miles away. Where Green Messiah comes up with the silly tripe against the Book of Mormon and the Book of Abraham that he comes up with, I will never know. He obviously has no interest in understanding anything. He's out to simply trip us up, to confuse us, to make us doubt, to make us wonder. I have horrible news for you, Green Messiah. I'm not doubting. I'm researching. And I'm finding. And I'm encouraging everyone on YouTube to do the same thing. Book of Mormon, solid. Very solid. In fact, I'll quote Lehi. The Book of Mormon itself is firm, steadfast, and immovable. Just like this Valley of Lemuel that they found. Anyway, he says, the question we posed, this is on page 61, the question we posed while standing in the canyon of granite was, does this de desert river flow continually as 1 Nephi 2.9 says it does? Does it flow day and night, 365 days a year? I could answer affirmatively only after our third excursion to the valley in November 1996. It had just rained for six straight days before our arrival. It was a freak storm. The heaviest one in years. But this storm provided a reverse key of sorts. Here's how he explores this. On our first and second visits, we witnessed the river during and just after the winter rainy season. As a result, we had expected the stream to be running. But in November 1996, after a seven-month dry spell, we were finally able to ascertain that the stream does flow constantly. The key came not from the flow at the moment that we were there, but could have come from the recent rains, but from the flora in and around the river. We had earlier discovered the river source to be a spring, some 600 feet down the canyon of granite from the upper valley. On our prior two visits, the grass, the weeds, and the herbs surrounded the spring head that had been a lush green. On our third visit, they were still green even after seven months, which was impossible because this valley gets between 115 and 125 degrees during the day. Those plants could not have survived, but they did. The spring was feeding the river continually, is what they discovered. 